All right, guys, so in this first video, what we're going to be looking at are just the general policies that we have for what's going on on our ACT uh, this it coming up here in a couple weeks. The couple things that you do need to understand before we get started is everybody will have a role and you will be assigned those roles um, and you will be trained accordingly in these videos will kind of help you with that. Okay, so just be aware of that. You will be expected to watch all of the videos and there will be a quiz at the end to make sure that we, we know that you watched all the videos and you understand what it is you're supposed to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, and I know there was not a test last year. I understand that. Two years ago, when we gave the ACT online to all of the juniors, there was a writing component, and that is still a test that ACT gives, but we are not honestly going to, where well, there is no writing section this time, which is actually quite a relief, because now we don't have to worry about whether or not the Chromebooks have keys or not. And I know that sounds kind of like a, like a small deal, but it was actually a really big deal. Uh, because if we didn't have a complete keyboard, we couldn't use certain Chromebooks. So anyway, that is the biggest change this year as far as the actual test goes. There's not a writing question or writing section. And if you have questions about any of these things, what I would ask you to do is you just watch the video and then there will be a comment section underneath that you can leave any questions that you have about the ACT and what is going on in that comment section. And either myself or Jamie or somebody else will answer the questions that you have about the the test and what's going on with it okay a lot of people i say well we've done this before in fact this training is going to be very similar to the one that we did before but we do this just to remind you that anytime problems come up you know what to do there won't be a ton of real issues once the test gets started like honestly all you guys really have to do are read some instructions and then click a few things on the computer and we'll talk about those in a different training but when you get those things done you're actually all the way done with everything that you have to do other than watch the kids and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do okay so the one thing that everybody again will receive uh an assignment and with those assignments comes a little bit of training if you are a room supervisor i will say there is more training for that than there is for the room proctors. Uh, they both have their specific roles, but the room supervisor has a few additional things they have to do. And again, we'll talk about those a little bit later. If you are assigned to give a, a special ed test, if, if you've got a different timing code is what those are called, you will be given a little bit of additional training. It's not much, honestly, and quite, quite frankly, it's just reading a different set of instructions. Uh, and we'll get a hold of you specifically so you can receive that training. Okay, uh, as you can see here, just make sure the kids know that they are going to be stressed, uh, but they will, this should be a positive experience for them. So here we go as far as an overview of the testing. The test is split up into two different days this year, and the reason for that is because of COVID. Uh, ACT, at least on the Saturday tests, has told us that we have to we have to continue to social distance. All of the all of the testers have to be six feet apart. And so that made it virtually impossible with the number of rooms that we have and the number of staff members that we have to adequately give the test on one day and have it appropriately staffed. And so what we did is we changed it to two days on, on the 23rd. I believe that is um, the students with the last names A through K. Uh, the people that will be giving that test for the most part are people in the V Hall and in, I can't remember what they are, in the science hall, I can't remember what that one's called right now, I apologize. Those two halls will be getting on Tuesday, then the other two halls will be giving it on Wednesday, and everybody else has specific assignments based off of those things. That's where the kids will be taking the test. The students will be allowed into the building at 8 o'clock. I know they usually start arriving about 8.30, but there will be, the breakfast will be shifted, those grab bags for breakfast will be shifted to 8 o'clock. So just be aware that they'll be here by then. We will have a meeting at about 8.30, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. And then testing needs to begin at approximately 9 a.m. In other words, the kids should be in their room. You should start giving your, your instructions around 9. Now, just so you're aware, ACT does require that this is the first activity of the morning. So if you are in charge of a club or specifically a sport, you cannot hold practice of any sort in the morning. There can't be any study groups. You can't have like a last-minute cram session with your students either. So just be aware of that. The, the rest of this video is going to deal with, pol with the policy, so I'm going to go through these as fast as I can. You will have one of two roles. You'll either be a room supervisor or a proctor, and we'll go over those roles more specifically in a different video. Okay, so here's 
basically, I mean, there's just things you can look at that real quick if you want to, but we will talk about those things. If you're a room supervisor, one of the things I specifically want to focus on is that you are the one that's in charge of documentation. And there's not a lot of documentation. It's a four page paper. You have to fill out a seating chart as well as a roster. And the more or less when you started it, you got to get a couple other things that we'll talk about in the video dealing with room supervisors. If you're a proctor, you just have two roles. You are required to be there even though you're not reading the instructions. Um, you're there to assist room supervisors, monitor the students, and the one role that you will have more than anything else is when it comes time to start the test and there are not students there, you have to come and tell me which students are not there. Not like, you don't have to like run super fast, but you need to get there and let me know because I need to remove those kids so that they can take the makeup test on another day, okay? Again, you must be available for the entire test session and this training counts as being trained by the test coordinator. A couple of things that are conflicts is you cannot be employed by a commercial enterprise. In other words, you can't make money ahead of time and give the ACT test. Okay, so if you're giving some sort of ACT prep class, um, you need to, and you're getting paid for it, you need to let me know or if you're employed by somebody that does that. Coaches, specifically, you can actually be in the room, but you cannot be in a one-on-one -on -one situation with an athlete. Um, I will sh show everybody their rosters, and if I would prefer that if you do coach somebody um, that you just let me know. Uh, you also can't su supervise a relative, so I guess I should, I should, uh, you should let me know if you have a junior this year that is taking the ACT, just so I can make sure that you are not in the same room as them. And these are the definitions of relatives, children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, siblings, in-laws, spouses, or people, persons under your guardianship. All of those are defined as relatives. So if you have any of those that are a junior that are going to be taking the test, I need to know so I can make sure that they are not assigned to the same room that you are assigned to, okay? And honestly, your main job is to just stay alert. Okay? The, this, I, the room supervisors in particular will receive a manual a few days ahead of time that tell you all of the procedures. And quite honestly, I don't, if you want to read up on them, you can. Most of them are pretty common sense. Just don't cheat. And the other thing is you cannot wing the verbal instructions. You've got to read them exactly what is in the book. So you can't be like, all right, guys, I think you all know what you're doing. So turn to test one. Okay. It doesn't work like that. You actually have to read the words exactly as they, as they are in the manual. The other thing is don't just sit at the desk the entire time. I'm not saying you have to walk around the room constantly, but you do have to monitor what the kids are doing and answer any questions you have about the administration of the test to them so that you should be at least familiar with what is going on. Okay, these things right here are things that you cannot do during the test. And I realize it makes for a very boring test. No grading papers or reading books. You can have conversations, but it can't be casual conversation. It needs to be quiet. Don't use a computer, um, and then you can't eat or drink in the test room. Again, if you need to step out, there doesn't, there don't need to be two people at all times in the room. If we can help it, we'd like to make it that way. Uh, there are far fewer students in your rooms this year than there have been in past years, and you'll see that when you get your roster. So just don't become a distraction, and you'll be fine. Uh, so that is, so that is the, the things you need to know. Now, as far as pre-test activities go, the English classes were very nice and they took care of the pre-registration forms online. And that is a separate video that you may have seen that is in this course as well. Okay. If a student hasn't done that, that is not a reason to not take the test. They actually have until two days after they take the test to fill out that pre-registration stuff, but they can't do it the day of the test. If they show up and they say, I'm not pre-registered, we still test them, but they don't have to actually, um, they don't have to have, have that finished until two days after they take the test, okay? The students will have been told that they need to bring pencils, bring a calculator, and don't worry too much about the calculators. A ACT is actually pretty lenient about what calculators they use now. There are very few students that have a calculator that they would not be able to use. They do need to bring a photo ID. If they forget that, they are not turned away as long as a teacher can identify that particular student. And they've been told not to bring their cell phone. If they have it, just ask them to turn it off. You might have a place that maybe they can leave them in the room that you can keep an eye on them so nobody takes them, okay? It is important though, we have, it, last time we gave it, we had to actually dismiss a couple students because on the break, and we'll talk about the schedule in a different in a different video, 
But on the break, students were using their electronic devices and we had to excuse them. There is no use of their cell phone during the entire test, okay? They will be dismissed, they get no score, and their phone device may be taken away. We won't, I, I don't think we'll actually do that, but everything else is true, okay? So if you have a place for them to keep their phones and make sure that they're off when they give them to you, that'd probably be the best way to do it, but we're telling them not to bring them, okay? So that is the first video letting you know the things that you need to know for the pre getting ready to give the test, okay? So if you have any questions about this, just post them below in the discussion and we will answer those questions as quickly as we can.